Hip-Hops is 1987.com. Blue 52 on their ass today. You know what it is. We out here, El Dorado, with my man Steven Jackson. And it's going down in the A. We out in front of Grady High School. You coming from a phenomenal game. Y'all just advanced, win or go home yeah. in the, w, in the uh, ABL playoffs and whatnot. But you got a lot of things going on, not just in the gym, but off the court as well. I know you're trying to make some moves and get back in the NBA. Talk to me yeah. about that. Yeah, I'm, uh, I gotta, I'm on my comeback. Um, I've been talking to a couple teams about coming back. You know, the good thing about it, God bless me with a 14-year career and I never had no injuries, no surgeries, and that's very rare playing basketball. So my body feel great. Uh, I got two more years left, so why not use my gift to the best of my ability and go back? And I got a couple teams I'm talking to, and I'm excited about the opportunity. Now, are you looking to come back to a c contender, a team you know, looking to win a championship, or could you see yourself maybe in a veteran role with like a, a Philadelphia, a team that'll be up and coming, or a Minnesota that could use your veteran leadership? Well, you know, I, I want my two, my next two years and my effort as hard as I play, I want it to be worth something. I want to be on the playoff team. I want to be on the team that got guys that's, that's experienced and that uh, guaranteed to make the playoffs. That's, that's kind of my aim right now because I know I can come in and help a playoff team right now. So uh, um, I, really, I, I wouldn't mind being a mentor to young guys, but I plan on coaching one day. So I, I'll let that come when I'm coaching. But right now I want to be a part of a team that's going somewhere and they got a chance to win a championship. Now I know you stay in contact with a lot of cats during the league. You're playing with Lou right now. I know you have a relationship with some cats on the Bulls. Mm -hmm. uh, have, you, have you reached out to any players or have any players reached out to you trying to recruit you and get you to come play with them yeah, this season? Yeah, I talked to uh, um, uh, I talked to Jimmy Butler and I talked to Rondo a couple times, and uh, they both warm on the team. Um, I had we had um, Jimmy Butler on ESPN when I worked on ESPN, and uh, we talked about it. You know, we had an in-depth talk about me coming back. You know, because he's seen how hard I've been working. And uh, I, I, I told him I would love to play with him. And Jimmy and Rondo know the type of teammate I am. They know what I bring to the game. I'm not coming out there to be a star. They, they're the stars now. It's Jimmy's team. I'm the guy to go out there, uh, lock up, to protect my teammates and be the ultimate teammate I am, man. And, uh, you know, guys, a, a lot of teams that's one player away from making the playoffs and being a good team, I'm that guy. And I think Chicago will be a good fit. Now, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about the 2016-17 the NBA season. But I got to also ask you about Tim Duncan. He just recently retired. I know that was your teammate for some time. You guys won an NBA championship together. Can you reflect a little bit just as uh, Tim Duncan as a teammate and what you thought when you first heard of, of, of his uh, retirement announcement? Well, I, I really wasn't surprised because I kind of feel like he was kind of uh, disrespected his last year. He didn't play as much as he should. Uh, Tim was very intelligent. He's a, his basketball IQ is unbelievable. And even at, at an older age, he still can play and be effective on the court. And uh, by him not playing the minutes he wanted to, I just think it was just time for him to hang it up. You know, um, he has a beautiful daughter and a beautiful son, and he's a great father. And uh, I kind of knew once once he wasn't playing as much, he's not the type of guy to sit on the bench and just watch the game. And uh, I knew retirement was close, but uh, I respect his decision, man. The best power forward to ever play the game. And uh, we just got to take our hats off to him and, and, and let him go off the way he wants to. Now we see as we right here in downtown Atlanta, you know, people are always stopping and speaking to you. You're always you're, you're a man of the people. I like to say you've never been. A a funny funny guy or one of those you know I'm famous I don't want to talk to you you were recently in Flint you know mm -hmm. you, you don't just do community work here in Georgia you were recently in Flint with Rashid Wallace and mm -hmm. a few other folks can you talk to me about what you guys were actually doing in Flint and what the mission is well you know Rashid's been doing it a lot on his own going there any time any chance he could to go to Flint and help out you know the water situation is bad and even now they're not even picking up their trash so it, it's getting worse and as soon as you pull into Flint you see a big water plant so it's, it's kind of ironic but you know, uh, when Rasheed told me he was doing it again, I, I made it an effort to get down there. Uh, we even got ESPN to come. Rachel Nichols and, uh, and some of that, Gina and Steve, some of the other staff came. And it was great, man. We're going back in September. But uh, it takes no effort, man. You don't need 20 people to go. You don't need cameras to go. Just go back to Flint and help them people because that water situation is bad. And uh, if one person help, if everybody do their part, then we probably can help the situation. Now, you just gave mention of Ra Rachel Nichols and ESPN. I definitely wanted to talk about that because not only are you doing things on the court as we gave mention to, but you're taking your talents off the court. ESPN as an NBA commentator. Talk to me a little bit about that. And has that role been has that role been difficult? You know, shifting from actually being behind the camera versus being on the court. It's, it's really easy because you know I speak from experience. You know, what I mean, I I, I keep it 1,000. Whatever I'm, I'm on TV, if I'm here, I'm gonna keep it 1,000. If I think somebody's sorry, if I think somebody suck, <laughs> I'm making too much money. I'm gonna say it on TV. You know, so. Uh, 
And ESPN don't have nobody like that. You know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm representing from the people. You know, I come from the struggle. That's why when I see my people, I'm comfortable around these areas. A lot, you know, a lot of NBA players can't just sit here and feel comfortable yeah, around all these people. But these are my people. So I come from this. So uh, ESPN respects me because I be me. Every time I'm on the air, I, I don't say nothing. I don't mean it's not scripted. Everything I say is what I mean by the, what's coming from the heart. And they respect that. And they don't have that on ESPN. But Rachel Nichols gave me an opportunity, and I just ran with it. And, uh, and uh, they definitely showed me a lot of love. Now, I got to ask you about the Golden State Warriors. You know, they've been under, I don't want to say a lot of scrutiny, but they've definitely been under a lot of media attention for the past two years, three years, with them winning the championship uh, a year ago and then, you know, losing this year to Cleveland, but being in the championship. With the addition of Kevin Durant, do you think that they will be able to win a championship this year? And what did you think about KD's move to Golden State? You know, me... Personally, you got to respect the man's decision. Uh, I'm, I, I look at it from both sides. Uh, I look at his KD. He's going to make more money and than he can make regardless of where he plays. Uh, he wants to be a part of a team that, that got a great chance of winning nine with him. You know, you can kind of like give them a championship, but they still have to go out there and win it. Uh, great team. I think they can win it. They, they got the, every, all the pieces to the puzzle to win a championship. Uh, but me personally, you know, I w I'm more of a Russ type of guy. I would have stayed home, you know, OKC, stayed loyal. And because uh, really all they needed was a Steven Jackson to score 15 points or 10 points a game. <laughs> you know, they made it to seven games in the series, so they needed some one more player with some balls to go out there and score some points and help KD and Russ, and they didn't have that. But uh, I think I think if he would have stayed, they still had a chance to win the championship. But going to Golden State, you know, it's even, it's even more uh, a great opportunity for him to get one. Now, you just mentioned Russ. I, that was going to lead into my next question. Michael Jordan recently compared Russell Westbrook to a younger him. Mm -hmm. He said uh, he feels though Westbrook is him 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And now the team would pretty much be his. You know, he has Victor Oladipo over there. Uh, they picked up some new talent. They already were pretty deep and whatnot. And I know uh, a cat that you know pretty well and Cameron Payne, right. uh, you know, be playing with them as well. But what do you think we can expect from Westbrook this year? And do you think he has what it takes, as Jordan would say, to be the next Jordan? Man, Westbrook is an animal. You know, when, when Jordan compares himself to compares Westbrook to him, he means by his relentlessness, his will to win, his, how, how hard he played the game, his passion for the game. Not too many players have that. You know, they, they, they throwing around money, but a lot of these guys don't really care about winning. You know, Westbrook is a dog. You know, MJ had that in him. That's why he comparing himself to, that's why he comparing Westbrook to himself. Obviously, Westbrook has a long way to go to reach Jordan's greatness, mm -hmm. but the way he approached the game, his passion, how hard he played, is very similar to MJ. And uh, even staying loyal to his team, want to get it done with one organization, Organization. I understand that, and uh, you know Westbrook is one of a kind, man. Now, a player that kind of in my in my eyes reminds me of yourself is Hassan Whiteside because right. he came, you know, he came through the ropes. He wasn't initially drafted into the NBA. He had to actually work hard and grind mm -hmm. to actually get his career to where it is. Similar to what you are, you know, you you didn't you went to Oak Hill. You had a wonderful high school career as far as being an All American and things of that nature. But you had to work and grit to get to the Nets and then get the next position and the next position. For some of these younger cats who are coming from overseas and you know playing in the D, D League, what advice would you give them about staying committed to your dreams so you can make it to the top? Well, at the end of the day, you got it starts with you having confidence in yourself. Uh, a lot of guys, you know, I say this all the time. A lot of guys, the best players are in jail because they never got the opportunity that we have. So if you do get the opportunity to be a professional athlete, you got to take advantage of it. That's the first thing. And you got to have some type of relationship with God. I mean, at the end of the day, you're going to come across a lot of situations where you're going to doubt yourself, where people are going to doubt you, people are going to say things. But when you got a, a, a great relationship with God and you at peace with yourself, a lot of things that you deal with in this business will bounce off you. It's, you'll, be, you'll be bulletproof. So my main thing is to have confidence in yourself. You got to put the work in, but have some type of relationship with God because you're going to need it along the way. Now, not only are you making moves in basketball, you're doing things with music, Stack 5. You know, I, it's been a while since you put out a project, but we're anticipating a new project sooner than later. Mm -hmm. And I see recently via social media that you accepted the So Gone Challenge. Yeah. So what are you listening to these days before you do a workout or before you get ready to, to run, get prepped for the new season? What are you listening to? What's in your iPod? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of old school. I still listen to Scarface. Um, I listen to a lot of uh, uh, West Coast music. I listen to Lucci. Uh, I, uh, what, around, what's around here? I listen to Lucci. I listen to Ti. Uh, my, my favorite, one of my favorite artists from Atlanta right now was um, uh, Pablo Juan. Okay. I like Pablo okay. Juan and Lucci. Pablo Juan and Lucci. That's what I'm, you know, I'm really rotating. But they got uh, some young guys from around my way, man, from Port Arthur, uh, the 4-5 movement. 
And it's, it's like four young guys from Puerto Rico bringing the trill music back. Chi Ali, uh, GP, uh, Young Otis. It's a, it's a lot of them back home. Young Red. It's a lot of them. Young Kevin Toe. It's a lot of the youngsters in my neighborhood coming from Puerto Rico that's trying to bring that trill music back. And uh, I'm really supporting them, man. But that's I'm, a, I'm I'm jamming a whole bunch of young guys that's trying to come up in the music industry, you know, and uh, and, and try to make a name for themselves because the music is good and they have something to say. Are you right now? Are you doing any recording, or anything? Or are you just focusing, you know, on basketball at this moment? Well, with with with, with the ESPN and getting back in the league, you know, I've been grinding so hard. I really haven't had time to get back in the studio. Last night when I did the so gone, uh, it felt good to be back. When I did the so got so go child, it felt good to, to to spit some bars again. But uh, I think once I get back in the league. You know, and once I get this season under control and take care of what I need to take care of first, uh, next time I'll probably drop something. You know what it is, man. We're going to be cheering for you all the way, rooting for you. Hope we see you soon on the NBA court. Your man Eldorado, live and direct in Atlanta with Stephen Jackson. Stay tuned for everything this man's got going on. Catch him on ESPN and catch him this season in the NBA arena near you. Grady High School. You did. Hip Hop since 1987.com.